So the deen that the Prophet Sallallahu bought, it gave, it gave them hope. It gave the Muslims hope. And this is why the vast majority of people who came towards Islam were those who were the downtrodden. And the greatest objection that the mushrikeen had, what was it? The greatest objection that the leaders of Quraysh had, they said, we can't sit with the likes of Bilal. How can Bilal be equal to us? Abu Jahal would say, how can men like Khuba be equal to me? Walid ibn Maghira would say, how could Suhaib al-Rumi be equal to me? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, and He tells the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He says, وَاصْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَضَاتِ وَالْعِشِّيِّ يُرِيدُونَ وَجْهَ He says, O Messenger of Allah, remain in the company, do sabr with those who remember Allah in the morning and the evening. Why? Because they want the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They want the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Bilal radiallahu anhu, he embraced Islam because this Islam gave him hope. And after a little while, Umayyah bin Khalf found out about the Islam of Bilal. And the narrations mention that he tormented him. By Allah, if today the streets of Makkah could speak, they would tell you that this is the same place where you are walking today, where Ammar and Yasir were persecuted. And the Prophet ﷺ would pass by and he would rub his hand over the head of Ammar and he would say, Sabran ya ala Yasir fa inna mawidakumul jannah. Oh Yasir, have sabr because your abode by Allah is Jannah. They would tell you that this place is the place where Sumayya radiallahu anha was martyred. If the Kentucky Fried Chickens and the McDonald's in Makkah could speak, they would tell you that this is the very same place where the Muslims were boycotted for two and a half years. And often they would have to eat leaves to survive. Eat leaves to survive. If your hotels, your Darul Tawheed, your Pearl Continentals, your Sheratons could speak, where your lux- luxury beds lie, by Allah, they would tell you that these are the very same places where Khubab would may- be made to lay on charcoal until the, the flesh of his back would melt. If the streets of Mecca could speak, they would tell you that these are the streets where Bilal would be dragged until his skin would peel from his body. And then they would beat him with their sticks and they would pelt him with stones. And what would Bilal say? He would say, Ahad, one Allah, Ahad, one Allah. Then they would, in the sweltering heat, of the Arab Peninsula for those who have been. They would make him lie down. They would put armor upon him so he would boil even more. And then they would put a rock upon his chest and it would feel as though his ribs are being crushed. And then they would say, O Bilal, denounce your religion. And he would say, Ahad, Ahad. They would say, Bilal, believe in Lat and Uzza. And Bilal radiallahu anhu would say, My tongue can't say those words. My tongue can't say those words. And Imam Halabi says, You know, Bilal, he would dilute the torment and the pain through the sweetness of Tawheed. Aqad says, How did Bilal manage to physically take this torment? He says, Because his heart and his mind was content.